Hello and welcome everyone. My name is the Clever Fool. Now, as of today, we have some new Age of Empires 2 campaign content as part of the Dawn of the Dukes campaign. Now, at the time of the recording of this video, uh, the prominent Age of Empires YouTubers have already uploaded their campaign series and good on them. But for the sake of completion, on my, I guess, personal own little channel here. Uh, I just had completed the official sets a little while ago, so I figured, hey, there's new content. We might as well continue onwards and uh, keep the strip going to make sure that the archives are complete, so to speak. Uh, Dawn of the Dukes is a DLC featuring the Eastern European civilizations. It adds two new civs, the Poles and the Bohemians, as well as making some additional changes to other civilizations, of course. And uh, it also adds three additional campaigns. Now, the first one that we will be playing through today will be the first level of Algirdus and Kestutis, featuring the Lithuanians. Faced with an impending invasion by the greedy Teutonic Knights, the small principality of Lithuania is on the brink of catastrophe. Divided and without wise leadership, the last pagans of Europe appear doomed, but Prince Algirdus and his loyal brother Kestutis refuse to bow to the marauders. Can they repel the crusaders and then contend with the grandsons of Genghis Khan, the fearsome horse lords of the Golden Horde? Like I just mentioned, we will be playing as the Lithuanians here. The first level is titled Family Affairs, and there is an achievement for this one called Tolerant Piety, and it involves building uh, monasteries in villages, I believe. So we will go ahead and see what is all up about that momentarily. Now, another little interesting tidbit is actually up to this DLC, the Lithuanians were the only civilization that do not get controlled by the player at any point for any of the levels. Um, every one of the other civilizations in the game up to that point uh, had actually at least a historical battle associated with it. For example, the Chinese, despite not having any official campaign dedicated to them, have a Lake Poyang, which is one of my favorite missions in historical battles. So it's good to see that this DLC is covering their bases and giving the Lithuanians some much needed love. Let's go ahead and get started. You want to know how I ended up here, foreigner? You dare ask such a question as if we were equals? Very well. I will tell you the story, my companion in misfortune. There is one thing of which we are not deprived in this bloody dungeon. It is time. I aimed for the throne, yet I ended up in this dark, moldy prison cell. Beyond these bars lies the land of my fathers, Lithuania. Its swamps, deep forests, and raging rivers are not exactly the heart of civilization, if you ask our enemies. Which makes it all the more astonishing that they have tried, time and again, to subjugate it. It began when some chosen ones felt called on to bring the light to Lithuania. They named themselves the Teutonic Order, and under the banner of the cross they promised deliverance, yet they brought only death and perdition. Lithuania was not easily cowed. Our ancestors learned how to fight by battling the forces of nature and the beasts of the dark primeval forests. Every one of our soldiers is steeped in that same tradition. But the more that we resisted the Crusaders and their god, the more ruthless they became. Slowly, we began to see their true faces. They called themselves holy warriors, but they were nothing more than robber knights. And a hundred years of pillaging our lands had made them masters of their trade. They raised our strongholds and torched our villages. Had Grand Duke Gedimina still been alive, he would have put this mob of greedy crusaders in its place. But a devious coup ended his life and left the throne to his useless son, Eunutis. Eunutis was weak, but worse, he was divisive when the land needed unity. 
He turned away from our old beliefs and accepted the Christian God. As he failed to control the domestic unrest, the Grand Master of the Teutonic Order saw his chance to subjugate Lithuania for good. However, Eunutis' brothers, Algirdas and Kestutis, refused to stand idly by as their beloved homeland fell to the cross. They exhorted the disaffected princes to dethrone Eunutis, who had barricaded himself inside of the Lithuanian capital of Vilnius. Gotta say, great voice acting and art for this section so far. Uh, the aesthetics of Age of Empires 2 Definitive Edition have been truly top-notch, and I'm not just saying that because I happen to work for the same company. Um, in any case, our main objectives here are to wait for Algirdas and Kestutis to discuss their plans. Our hints tell us that Algirdas is restricted to the Castle Age and a population limit of 150. His strategy focuses on land warfare, so constructing docks is impossible. Kestutis will help keep the Teutonic Order in check for you. If you help him defeat this enemy, however, he will redirect his forces to help you even the odds in the battle for the Lithuanian throne. Lithuanian rural populations longs for peace and stability. You may be able to win the support of neutral villages in Grey once you reach the Castle Age. Janudis rules the Lithuanian capital of Vilnius, but you can seize it if you evict your brother from the city. Do not destroy what may be of use to you later. Do not hesitate to send the tenacious Algirdas into combat. Should he be wounded, he will retreat to his castle to recover and fight again after he has recuperated. That's cool. Um, having the newer missions focus less on the survival of a single hero unit, unlike the older missions, is kind of an indication, indication of the evolution of level design in terms of Age of Empires 2 at least. Algirdas and Kestutis must initially rely on simple battering rams when besieging enemy fortresses, but it may be possible to steal construction plans for advanced siege equipment by defeating the Teutons. Perfect. Your scouts report that Algirdas and his supporters in green begin at a slight disadvantage, initially only controlling a small settlement in the north and a nearby castle. Even though Algirdas is feuding with most of his relatives, he can count on the support of his younger brother Kestutis in Sion, who holds the western frontier with an army of heavy cavalry and swordsmen. In the east lies the Lithuanian capital Vilnius, which is ruled by Janudis in blue. To expel their hostile brother from the city, Algirdas and Kestutis must defeat Janudis' army of crossbowmen, pikemen, and... Leikai? Leisii? I guess it's Laetis? That's, that's like the plural of Laetis? That's a cool word. Anyway... Narimantis in purple, another brother of Algirdas, rules a principality in the south, though initially neutral. He is likely to send his powerful knights, Lacii, and sturdy battering ramps to support Yanudis rather than his other brothers. In the far west lie two Teutonic outposts in red. These are manned by experienced knights and their foot soldiers, and they prove difficult for Kestutis to take on alone. All right. All right, let's go ahead and get this started. Internal disputes threaten our independence. The Teutonic Knights rattle their swords, while our useless brothers underestimate the threat. Let us put an end to this mischief. Take the throne and prove worthy of our father's legacy. That is how we will do it, my brother. Just keep the order at bay. I will take care of our ineffectual brothers so that they might understand that the affairs of government should not be in their hands all right cool so we have a new objective here which is to drive Janudis out of Vilnius by raising his wonder in the center of the city it's pretty fancy um, now as of right now I am vaguely aware that it seems like this achievement is bugged so what I'll do is I'll create a save right before I uh, build the last necessary shrine slash temple or whatever it is. Um, and that way, once the patch comes through, I'll be able to unlock the achievement off screen. 
is one of the benefits of having a backlog. You have a little bit of flexibility in your schedule. Father gave Vilnus to me, making it clear who he considered his heir. Raise your hand against me, and you shall die! You cannot scare us, you know this. We have known you from an early age, and you have always been this pompous knee-high boy that you are evidently still today. You are all bark. No bite. Wow. It's a uh, very scathing voice acting from both sides. Good emotion, though. Very nice emotional delivery there. Now, Lithuanians focus mo mainly on cavalry, I believe. So let's focus on some early development here. Get some food and gold out if I can. Good. And the more villagers we can get here, the better. I would like to advance to the castle age sooner rather than later. So as many food gathers early on here as possible would, would be great. All right, seems like we're not under too much pressure just yet, which is why I'd like to leverage this time to build a better economy here. Alright, looks like we got a pretty decent lay of the land here. Actually, it looks like that area is solidly blocked off by the tree, so I don't need to worry about it. Okay, now I'm just gonna save up for the castle age here. Up to Castle Age we go. Let's pick up gold mining. And as soon as I get to the Castle Age, I'm going to build a TC here, maybe a TC here, and then try to castle up. Uh, I'll try to maybe castle up like back here. And then castle up here once, maybe. My envious kin. Is there nobody left with a sense of loyalty and decency? Do not grieve over it. Close, close. You can rely on me to teach the two 
Okay, so now we have another objective, which is to defeat Narimantas here. Turn on auto farm reseed here, making use of all the natural food sources that we can get right now. Religious affairs are dangerous, but they can also be a useful tool. Some of our subjects follow ancient pagan tradition. Build shrines in neutral villages to allow the residents to adhere to their pagan customs. Settlements that remain pagan will train soldiers. Settlements that adopt Christianity will send resources. Are committed to Christianity. Perhaps we can win both groups over to our cause. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna go for a full pagan push here, just just for thematic sake. We'll let the resource scattering happen on our own. Show yourselves if you are so bold, my defiant brothers. I long for a good fight. All right, let's grab a university. Let's grab another stable, I guess. We need more food, that's for certain. I think we're about to be attacked here. Okay, we're going to be low on wood for a little while. Okay, I think the next order of business for us is to get some castles up. under attack here. I will assure that they do not cross our borders. But I will need the help of your soldiers to wipe out the Order's outpost, Algirdan. Okay, perfect. We are making pretty good progress here. Still short food. We have lots of wood choppers all of a sudden. Let's have one TC do wheelbarrow, another TC do more villagers. Uh, we need to think about upgrading our cavalry as well. 
Let's do that now. And build shrines here. Okay, still doing all right against Purple here. He's actually quite strong. We are sure that the residents of this settlement could keep their ancient beliefs. In gratitude, they will send soldiers to assist us in battle. Okay, that is one set of pagan soldiers online. Let's get a monastery of our own. Be good to have some monks that we can heal up our guys between battles. And we've actually housed ourselves too. Fortunately, we lost a couple of units to offset that. And our castle just came up online. Good. Okay, that is a lot of enemies. Let's start on murder holes. In gratitude, they will send soldiers to assist us in battle. Let's do a shrine back here. These guys are getting their asses handed to them. Okay, I don't have Bodkin Arrow online yet. So hopefully this castle will stay online. There is a lot of stuff going on right now, that's for sure. We are sure that the residents of this settlement could keep their ancient beliefs. In gratitude, they will send soldiers to assist us in battle. All right, what's going on? We have a good number of villagers right now. We're super low on gold, unfortunately. We do have all of our gold mining tech though, so that's good. Uh, there's a nice pile of stone over here as well, that's good. I'm gonna have these guys try to mine up as much of that as I can. <laughs> 
All right, and we also have a secondary objective here to help Kestudis defeat the Teutonic Raiders. So that's these guys over here. of this settlement should keep their ancient beliefs. In gratitude, they will send soldiers to assist us in battle. Sveiki. Supratau. Eimi statyti. Lovajos. Eimi statyti. Aš pasiruošęs. Eimi statyti. Okay. Lost a villager there, that's unfortunate. That is a lot of blue forces. Let's repair up this castle. We're still fighting at a pretty big disadvantage here. I just realized that blue's in the Imperial Age and we're not. Poor villager walled himself in. There's nothing much else I can do there, buddy. Okay, let's pick up Bodkin Arrow at our earliest opportunity here. Yeah, let's train a bunch of rams, that's good. Keeping a strike force of melee soldiers and castles is a great strategy for ensuring that they don't easily go down to ram attacks like we just saw there. We're floating tons of wood now. I'm gonna sell that off since we don't need it. We need to create more knights, create more latest. And I would like to try to sh strike at my enemy here. Build a second castle up on that cliff. Having two castles really, really amplifies the defensive uh, aspect there. It's stronger than having two individual castles in separate areas if the choke point is particularly valuable. Let's get another shrine up here. Close 
Nice. So now we're making good progress against these raiders here. Honestly, like, Teal hasn't been doing too much for us. I guess he's been keeping red off our backs, which is good. We are sure that the residents of this settlement could keep their ancient beliefs. In gratitude, they will send soldiers to assist us in battle. We're nearing our population cap, which is great. These are the rams that we're worried about here. Go ahead and finish those bad boys off. Pick up Botkin Arrow like we promised we would. Looks like it's one base down. Let's start moving towards the second base. We're out of stone to mine. Let's just start picking up food. And we're actually at our pop cap here. There's no siege coming, so I'm not super worried yet. Yeah, getting those castles up early is pretty vital here. We're out of gold down south. Let's take this gold mine away from the raiders. That's how you can kind of tell that you're doing well in development if you're able to reach out and grab additional resources. The Order's raiding parties are on the run. I fear that these robber barons will return in the future. But for now, we should focus on liberating Lithuania from the rule of our ragged brothers. Okay, perfect. Let's uh, regroup briefly at home base here. And build a couple siege workshops. Oh, hello there. This is a good opportunity for us to make a save. Uh, five of six family affairs. My soldiers. 
All right, so it does exist. Let's Shall return to our game. Plan for powerful siege weapons from the Crusaders. But nobody in my ranks is skilled enough to understand them. Do you happen to have siege engineers capable of doing so? Okay, now we research siege engineers. And that will hope hopefully get us what we need. Let's get one more shrine up here. Excellent. Your engineers deciphered the plans that we had captured. We can now construct powerful catapults. Powerful, powerful what? Powerful catapults? We are sure that the residents of this settlement could keep their ancient beliefs. In gratitude, they will send soldiers to assist us in battle. Powerful catapults or powerful trebuchets? Oh, that is just, that is just precious. That is uh, a voice voiceover mistake there, isn't it? Okay, so purple is sending a force at us. I'm not super worried here. After we repel that force, we'll have enough trebuchets to think about attacking blue here. Right, let's move to this staging point over here. Maybe construct a frontline castle at some point. There is gold back here too that I can grab. Wow, those guys have got onagers, huh? Close, 
Sveiki. Stumsiausi. Eimi statyti. Good. And really... Yellow's actually turned out to be some pretty decent cannon fodder here. I think the tide of the battle has firmly turned in our favor now, though. It's weird to have trebuchets in Castle Age. All right, let's go directly for the wonder now. Make it into the city. Keep this rebel rouser away from me, you useless fools. Keep him away. A desperation in his voice, dude. Rousing. Okay, no need to destroy the whole city like the hints mentioned. All we need to do is take care of the wonder and we'll be good to go. Nice. Let him go, Algirdas. He will not come back. I have heard that he seeks refuge in Moscow. May he rot there. We have more important things to take care of. Yes, we have more important things like dealing with purple. Now, Purple is only in the castle age, so I'm very unworried about him. We've definitely reached the point where the scenario is essentially won. And that's great. There's a nice progression to the scenario, which is uh, defeating Red is definitely the right way to go to get the Trebs to make it easier for you to assault this wonder. Uh, defending this area is very important because it blocks Blue from just wandering into your, your town. Defending this area is important because it protects your economy from purple.
isn't too much more to say here, but using heavy cavalry to run over everything is super satisfying to say the least. Now all we gotta do is defeat Narimantis. And he can do what he wants with this base for all I care. Now we have three forces converging on one. It's almost like we're the AI now. And the fact that yellow produces rams for us is actually pretty good. It saves us from having to produce our own siege and manage them. Like, the, just the extra bodies on the field is really nice. Overall, I'd say this is a very well-designed first level. It's a shame that the achievement didn't pop um, after the save, but fortunately I have that save, and with luck, then I'll be able to load it in the next patch and just get the achievement right away. It seems like this western entrance is actually the main entrance to the base. This eastern entrance also allows people to get in. Let's go for the town center. could even convert that fishing boat if I really wanted to, but I won't. And now, yeah, it's really only a matter of time. Narimanta should really just give up now if he knows what's good for him. Still producing quite a lot of knights, though.
Even the priests are running in. The pagans rule. I think once this TC goes down, Naramantis will sur surrender. That'll be that. There we go. Believe it. My fortress destroyed. My army smashed. I have no choice but to withdraw after this shameful defeat. There he runs. Marimantas allegedly seeks refuge with the Golden Horde. What a pathetic idea. It will not do him any good. Lithuania is ours. Let us rest and allow our brave men to recover from the fighting. We will meet at the court in Vilnius, my brother. For there is much to discuss. Oh, okay. And uh, I actually did get the achievement just now. Tolerant piety, so I, it, is, it isn't bugged. Um, you just get it at the end of the mission as opposed to at the start of the mission. So I had heard some rumors that it was bugged, but it looks like it's not. Unless the patch already came through. To seize power is one thing. To keep it is something else entirely. Only a fool declares himself the victor after winning the first battle of a war. As such, Algirdas and Kestutis, the victorious usurpers, knew that their triumph could turn out to be short-lived. The two of them, however, were a different breed than most rulers of their time. Instead of quarreling as their brothers had done, and as most people expected them to, for who had ever heard of two men sharing power? Algirdas and Kestutis agreed to rule Lithuania together. It was a remarkable move. And it showed that they cared more about the well-being of their subjects than personal power. This, of course, did not go unnoticed by the Teutonic Grand Master. He knew that he would have to contend with more formidable opponents from now on. Perfect! So that was the first episode of Algirdas and Kestutis, with the achievement Tolerant Piety completed. Um, so hopefully it doesn't have to do with building only shrines or only monasteries. I hope you can unlock the achievement by also mixing in uh, monasteries or you know only building monasteries as well. Um, but yeah, that's just something to look out for if you're playing this DLC early on, just to check to make sure that uh, you unlock the achievement like you wanted to at the end. Anyway, this was a really fun first level so far. I have high expectations. A lot of people have been saying that this is a very good set of campaigns. So until next time, my name is The Clever Fool. See you guys later. Bye-bye.